Learning cloud doesn't need to be hard, but without the right approach, you'll waste hours and potentially thousands of dollars in courses, leaving you no closer to your goals. As someone who went from complete beginner to AWS cloud engineer at a top London financial company, I understand the pain of self-learning cloud from scratch. The good news is there's a way to make it a lot easier and it's simpler than you might think. In this video, I'll reveal my three-step framework for learning cloud in the most efficient way. But first, I need to explain the biggest challenge that makes learning cloud so hard. And there's a simple fix for this. Imagine two people, let's call them Alex and Sam, who both want to become chefs. Alex buys every cookbook he can find enrolls in online culinary courses and spend months memorizing recipes and techniques. He can tell you the exact temperature at which proteins denature, but he rarely steps foot in an actual kitchen. Sam, on the other hand, takes a practical approach. She starts by making simple dishes at home, gradually working her way up to more complex recipes. She volunteers at a local restaurant and learns from experienced chefs. When she reaches a problem or wants to improve a dish, she looks up specific information to solve that. Fast forward a year and both Alex and Sam apply for jobs at high-end restaurants. But when it comes to the practical cooking test, Alex fumbles. He knows the theory behind everything, but his knife skills are clumsy and he struggles to manage multiple dishes at once. Sam, however, easily passes the practical test. Her technique might not be textbook perfect, but she adapts quickly and produces tasty, well-presented dishes. Although she can't recite a lot of facts, she demonstrates a solid understanding of all the fundamental areas of cooking. This highlights the two different approaches to learning cloud. The academic way, like Alex's method, involves deep dives into theory and understanding all of the details before practical application. The practical way, like Sam's, focuses on learning through doing. Now, I'm not saying the academic approach is totally useless. If your goal is to become a cloud guru who understands every little detail and nuance, then yeah, you might want to go deep on the theory. But for most people who just want to get a job in cloud or build cool stuff, the practical route is gonna be way more effective. Think about it like this. Say you wanted to learn a new language. Would you spend months memorizing a dictionary or would you prefer to start practicing your skills maybe speaking to people and actually writing things. Sure, you'll probably make a lot of mistakes at first, but you'd learn so much faster. And at the end of the day, the skills you gain will be a lot more useful. The truth is, the biggest thing that's probably making it hard for you to learn cloud is your approach. If you've been taking the academic way, you've been making things harder on yourself than it needs to be. But okay, some of you might already know this. The real question is, how do we actually start taking this practical approach? Well, follow this simple three-step framework. Step one. You know, this reminds me of when I first started learning to cook. I was really excited to make all these fancy dishes I saw on TV. But when I actually got in the kitchen, I had no idea where to start. I tried to make some complicated recipe with a million different ingredients, get overwhelmed and end up ordering takeaway instead. It wasn't until I scaled things back and started with simple dishes that I actually started to improve. I'd pick one new recipe each week, something challenging enough to teach me skills, but not so hard that I'd give up halfway through. Over time, those small wins added up and I became a much better cook. Learning cloud is similar. It's easy to get overwhelmed by all the services and technologies out there, but the key is to start small with practical projects that you actually care about. The absolute best way to learn cloud is to find a real problem you want to solve and then design a cloud solution to tackle that problem. Now, I get it. Coming up with project ideas can be hard, but here's something you can do. Pay attention to the small annoyances and problems you encounter in your day-to-day -day life. Maybe there's some task you have to do manually that could be automated or a process at work that's more complicated than it needs to be. Those are perfect candidates for cloud projects. For example, I recently read this blog post from Werner Vogels, the CTO of Amazon Web Services. He was spending a lot of time in meetings and wanted a quick way to get summaries of each one. So his team built a tool using AWS services to generate meeting summaries using AI. He took a real pain point from his daily life and used cloud tech to solve it. The key is to start with something that's challenging enough to stretch your skills, but not so huge that you get overwhelmed. It's way better to tackle a bunch of smaller tasks than to try and build one big massive application that does everything. Now, I know some of you are probably thinking, but I still have no idea what kind of project to build. Don't worry. If you're really stuck, there are some great project ideas out there to get you started. One that I really like is the Cloud Resume Challenge. It's a semi-guided project that walks you through building a real resume website using various cloud services. It's a great way to learn the basics. But honestly, the best projects are gonna be the ones that solve a problem you personally care about. When you're working on something meaningful to you, you're so much more likely to stick with it when things get tough. The cool thing is, as you work on these projects, you'll start to develop a sort of cloud mindset. You'll begin to see opportunities to use cloud services all around you. It's like when you buy a new car and some you start noticing that same model everywhere on the road. Your brain gets tuned to spot those opportunities. And that mindset is incredibly value in today's job market. Companies are always on the lookout for people who can identify business problems and come up with innovative solutions. As you work on these projects, you're also building up a portfolio of work to show potential future employers. It's one thing to list a bunch of certifications on your resume. It's a whole other thing to be able to point to actual working cloud solutions that you've built from the ground up. So don't get too hung up on finding the perfect project idea. The important thing is to just get started. 
But what do you do after you found something to build? Step two. Okay, imagine you're in a kitchen ready to create a free course meal. But where do you start? It's important to realize that you don't have to cook everything all at once. You can break this down into smaller, more manageable tasks. Maybe you start with the appetizer, focusing on each ingredient and each step of the recipe, then move on to the main course. And finally, the dessert. Before you know it, you've created a whole meal, one dish at a time. This approach of breaking things down into smaller parts isn't just useful in the kitchen. It's a useful strategy for tackling cloud projects. This helps you learn way more effectively. When you're working on smaller tasks, you can really dive deep into understanding each component. So how do you actually put this into practice? Follow this checklist. First, define your project's overall goal. What exactly are you trying to build or achieve? Next, break that goal down into major components or features. At this stage, it's helpful to think about what particular cloud service you want to use for each component. For example, if you need some kind of storage service, you may consider AWS S3. Each of these components will end up being a task you do. Once you have your components, create an architecture diagram with the cloud services you want to use. This is like a map of your project, showing how all the pieces fit together. Don't worry about making it perfect. Let's look at a real world example of this approach in action. Consider the meeting summarizer that I spoke about earlier that was built by Werner Vogel's team at AWS. First, they started by identifying the goal, save people time by providing meeting summaries. Next, Break that down into individual components and tasks. In this case, you would need to upload and store the audio file from meetings. This also needs to be transcribed into text. This text would then need to be analyzed and summarized by some kind of generative AI service. And finally, we need to get a text output. And this is all represented by this architecture diagram. Now, once you've done this, it's important to organize the task you've identified. This is where a Kanban board comes in handy. A Kanban board is a visual tool for managing tasks. You can use a physical board with sticky notes or an online tool like Trello or Asana. The basic setup is to have columns for to do, in progress, and done. You create a card or note for each task and move it through these columns as you work on it. This gives you a clear visual representation of your progress and helps you focus on what needs to be done next. Now you might be thinking, I spent all this time planning a project but haven't actually built anything. And that's fair. But all of this is important in giving you the information to actually complete the project. Also, it's something great you can refer to in job interviews if they ask you about how you structure projects. But at this stage, it's time to move on to the most critical step, step three. So here's the truth that you already know. If you want to get the most value out of your cloud projects, you've got to work on them consistently. It's not about pulling all nicers or cramming for hours on end. It's about showing up day after day and putting in the work. So how do we make sure we are actually staying consistent with our cloud projects? Well, I've come up with this little framework that I like to call cloud. Convenient, I know. Let's break these down one by one. First up, C for commit to a daily target. Now, I'm not saying you need to spend hours and hours every day. That's just not realistic for most people. Even just 30 minutes can make a huge difference if you do it regularly. It's kind of like working out. You're better off doing a quick 30 minute session every day than trying to cram in a three hour marathon once a week. Next, we've got L for lock in a schedule. Now. I get it, life gets busy and it's easy for personal projects to slip through the cracks. That's why having a set schedule can be super helpful. For me, I found that setting aside time right after dinner works best. I'd finish eating, clean up, then boom, cloud project time. Moving on to O for organize your progress. This could mean using tools like Trello or Jira to track what you're working on. The important thing is to have some way of visualizing your progress. It's a great motivator when you can look back and see how far you've come. Another idea is to use a public GitHub repository for your project. That way, it's like a public record of your progress. Now for you, utilize accountability. Let's be real. Sometimes, even with the best intentions, we struggle to stick to our goals. Maybe you've got a friend who's also into learning tech. Why not team up? If you don't have a tech savvy friend handy, don't worry, there are tons of online communities where you can find study buddies or accountability partners. Finally, we've got D for do the work. Build something, break it, fix it, improve it. Each time you encounter a problem and solve it, you're building real practical knowledge. So there you have it, the cloud framework for staying consistent. Stick with it over time and it will work. But what if I told you that just learning cloud won't be enough to get a job? As a self-taught cloud engineer, I've made a lot of mistakes in my career. If I didn't make these mistakes, I think I would have found a job quicker and be further ahead in my career. But the good news is you can learn from my mistakes and you can find out what I wish I knew before becoming a cloud engineer in this video.